Amen, amen, amen. The power is in you. Amen. I don't wait on the crowd. The power is in us. Because he's great and he's great in, in me. And I'm so excited uh, because it's the Lord's day. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. How many glad to be here? Let's, let's, go, let's go ahead. Amen. If you are, look at somebody that I'm glad to be here. What about you?
you want to do, say what you want to say, move how you want to move, bless you. You want to God as you speak, God as you will bless you. Uh, first lady, Mama Baloo, God, in this city, we celebrate her. But most of all, God, at the end of the day, that you will get the glory. Have your way in us, God. Do what you want to do. We will forever give your name and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Feel my sin to your feet. to the aisle and give a hand a clap of praise and honor her this morning with the first lady, Sister Pearlie Blue. Come on, stop your hands for her. Come on.
fried and shredded. By the time I get here, I still got some joy left. Come on. That's all I've been through. Come on, tell them I still.
come to heaven. So this time, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I come to have a good time. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor, I come to have a real good time. If you come to have a real good time, somebody just clap your hands and give a praise.
know, the preparation season, God has given me so many different words. I said, okay, Lord, we're talking about this. He's like, uh, that's for you. He said, I said, okay, Lord, I'll take that. We're talking about this. No, that one's for you too. And so then I got another word. It's like, okay, this is what we're going to expound on today. So we had a busy week. You know when you're trying to get the word prepared for the people of God, you know how the enemy does you. He makes you busy, gets you all off focus, trying to distract you here, put this in the way, send a mail, send a bill in the mail that you wasn't expecting or looking for, just all the things that he does to try to distract you. Workload may be a little heavier this week. You know, you're trying to consecrate it, not be involved in too much carnality and just trying to really get your heart and your mind prepared to hear from God. It's not about us. God does the work, but we want to just present ourselves a vessel before him that's pure and holy so that he can yeah. have his way. And sometimes when we have garbage and junk on the inside, it just it can hinder the flow sometimes. Now, God is God. He can do what he wants to do and say what he wants to say, but I was just, you know, trying to prepare like we normally we do. So this week, you know, we hadn't had a lot of uh, family time. We were working 10-hour shifts and moving around all around through the week to church and different engagements and events. So on Friday night, my husband asked me, he said, y'all want to go to the movies tonight after I get my hair cut? And I was like, mm -hmm. I was a little hesitant, but I, I, I understand the importance of family time. Yeah. And I, I love it when we're able to just spend some quality time together. And I was hesitant about saying yes, and then it was getting late. And then, you know, I started having this battle in my mind. Battle in my head, you know, family, or whether, you know, going to the movies was going to put me in a different space. You know, you don't want to be in a space of carnality too long. You know, we, we sometimes think that uh, we can speak and hear where God flows, where he speaks. He can speak to you at the movie theater. He can speak to you in your prayer closet. He can speak to you at the grocery store. He can speak to you in your sleep. He can speak to you where, you know, but sometimes we get in our, our religious mind and head sometimes because that's all it is and God is delivering us from religion and all those things and it's about just the relationship with him but anyway we are his instruments and his vessels and so I made myself available to Jesus all he wants us to do is just give him a yes yeah. so I gave the Lord a yes and I gave my husband a yes and so yes we did go to the movies on Friday night we spent some time with our family and we had a good time we went to see a cute little Disney film. I don't know if any of y'all have seen it, but we went to go see Inside Out Part 2. Oh, yeah. Did y'all see that? Yeah. Amen. So we went to see it, and if, for those of you who don't know, it's about an 11-year-old girl whose name is Riley. Um, her life was kind of turned upside down because her family moved her from the Midwest, I think they were in Minnesota, all the way to San Francisco. And then, you know, her friends, all the, the team and stuff, you know, her little life was in Minnesota. She was being packed up and moved over to San Francisco. So the the story, the movie is about what goes on in her emotions, how her emotions start developing. And it, it's a good, it has a good point to it. And so the emotions that she was experiencing was joy, sadness, disgust, anger, and all those things. So in part two, they introduced a new uh, emotion that she, she had grown up, she's now 13, and it, it introduced a new emotion, and it was anxiety. How many of us know about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, so I won't spoil it for those of you who have not seen it, but the moral of the story is that the different emotions were trying to be in the control center. They wanted to control what happened in Riley's life. Joy wanted to be in control all the time. She didn't want sadness to be in her life. She didn't want anger to have no fun. She didn't want fear. But how do you know that all those emotions help make who we are? Yes. So sometimes fear will want to be taken control. It just depends on what the what the uh, circumstance or the situation was. It just depends on what's going on in your life. Sometimes anger. You know, the Bible says it's okay. Be angry, but sit not. God gave us all of these emotions. He gave them to us. We just got to learn how to manage them. So the, the points that were there were good. So anxiety, this new one that they introduced, the anxiety, it, it started off okay. Anxiety is like a planner. You know, like anxiety puts you in a place where, okay, I'm going to plan for the next thing. I want it to be all right. But what happens when you allow anxiety to run the control center, it spins out of control. It doesn't have no brakes. And so I won't share the rest of the story just in case y'all want to go and see it, but I familiarize myself with that because I understand that anxiety is a familiar place for all of us. I don't think any of us have been exempt to it. Now, we might not let it control us because the Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing, right? So we understand what to do when those, when those emotions try to get out of control. We declare the word of God. 
it's a mess. I just kind of say it like that. But with all the attacks, the riots, the wars, inflation, food shortages, the increase in homelessness, lawlessness, hopelessness, the news, the election, our health, our money, our babies getting ready to go back to school, the list can go on and on and on. And I know that from time to time, anxiety has tried to visit us, but we know that it cannot stay. Amen? It cannot stay. we got to get that stuff out of here because God is preparing us. He's preparing his people. And so the enemy is pulling all the shots. He's trying to get all the, the he's trying to get all his tactics. Anything that he can use against us, he's trying to get it. So my my message for you today, it took me a minute to get a title for it, but the Lord, he helped me do it, is to understand the assignment. Okay. Come on, man. come on. Understanding the assignment. In this season, in this season, it is imperative that our minds are focused on Jesus. So a few weeks ago, I had a dream or a vision. Can't really, I don't know a lot, I don't remember a lot of the details in it, but what I saw was God gathering or positioning his soldiers. I saw like generals, I saw sergeants, I saw uh, like privates, but their, their assignments were different, like some were prayer warrior generals, some were worship generals, some were um, hospitality, yeah, just yeah. all these different pieces and components that almost looked like chess pieces, but he was putting everybody into position. Putting them all in position, and it didn't matter. We was all in the kingdom. It was all, it was all heavenly. So it don't matter what the position is. It's just that he was categorized. I saw him putting the generals here, the sergeants here, the majors here, the privates there, and just all the different people gathering this big army together. And that's all I saw. That's all that I could remember. That's all that I saw. And so what that brought to my heart is that God is preparing us for what is to come. Yeah. I know that the message has been clear. We got to, you know, focus. We got to get ourselves together. We are the body of Christ. The world needs us, but not so much the world. God is ready for us to be in position and in our place and to do what he has called us to do. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 4, it says, No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please the one that enlisted him as a soldier. Are we soldiers in the army of the Lord this morning? Yes. So when all that stuff tries to come our way, we cannot find ourselves busy and our minds entangled with the things, the news. We can't be entangled with the, the cares of this world. We can't be entangled with who's doing this and who's doing that. He said that we have to, if we're in this warfare, if we're going to show up for this battle that God has assigned and called us to do, then we can't be messed up in the mind with the things that are going on in this world. So my message for us today, as I was asking the Lord, what to say, God, what you want me to say, how you want me to do it, all I kept hearing was the words equipped, equipped. get equipped, equipped, yes, sir. anchor, and abide, yeah, equipped, right. anchor, and abide, and abide. Yeah. equipped, anchor, anchor, and abide, and the last one, all hands on day. All right, man. All right. All
Spirit, the Holy Spirit, every component of Himself He gave to us. And all we're required to do is give it back to Him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give it back to Him. Yeah. Hallelujah. So let's talk about these words that the Lord gave me. Talk Equip. About it, talk about it. Equip. Equip means supply with the necessary items for a particular purpose. Prepare mentally for a particular situation or task. Like I stated earlier, there is a spiritual battle going on, if you're paying attention or not, it's going on. Yes. Oh, yes. There's a spiritual battle going on in the heavens, and there's a spiritual warfare going on in the earth. We have to pay attention. But at this moment, for us who kind of been on the sidelines, we want to stop and praise and thank God for his love. He reminds us, he, he doesn't leave us out there unprotected. Right. He is patient with us. Yes. He fights for us even when we're not in position. Yes. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes. He is a good God. Yes. He is patient. He gives us the time that we need. He gives us the time. He gives us the time and time. Because time is in his hands. He's I'm away for my children to give it to yeah. them. Yeah. I'm away for my children to do forget about that assignment. I know that grief pulled them down for a minute. I know some situations and some circumstances happened that kind of pulled them away for a minute. But guess what? He still fights for us and he's still trying to prepare us and get you ready. He's like, come on, baby. He don't yell at you. He don't holler at you. He's like, come on, you got it. Get up, get up. Daddy is coming. Come on, get up. I need you to be in position. I need you to be in place. He never leaves his children unprepared. So I need us, sisters and brothers. I need us yeah. to listen to daddy today. Our father is telling us to get equipped. Yeah. Get equipped. Amen. Yeah. So in Ephesians, y'all gotta pray for me. Come on, come on, you got you alright. I done messed around and got these braces on my teeth. <laughs> 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 they got me doing a whole nother ball game. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 14. Alright. <clears throat> it says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Yeah. Put on the whole arm of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yeah. Do y'all see some wiles of the devil going on? Oh, yeah. Is it some wiles of the devil going on? Yeah. I don't need to make a list right. Y'all know what the wiles are. Yeah. It's a lot of wiles going on. Yeah. It said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. 
Jesus, Lord. It's not our righteousness. It's his righteousness. So let's put that first plate on. Accept it in your heart. We can't be right all the time. We make mistakes. We fall short. We get upset. We have a bad attitude. We do things, but guess what? It's God's righteousness. If you know and understand it, it's him that's doing all things. Just accept it. Receive it. Believe it and rest in the fact that I got on the blessed for the righteousness today. Your steps will start being ordered. the 
opportunity, but let me just share with you. My daughter is 12, getting ready to be 13. And I don't believe I man, I don't believe I stood in front of a podium since before she was born. But I know what I've been called to do. I thought, you know, motherhood took over and you know, just doing things how life just goes. Yes, I still pray, yes, I still minister on one on one to my friends and to those who call me up on the phone and, and try to encourage and minister to. But guess what? God got another. He said, Okay, daughter, it's time. Shake off the, you gotta get back up. Let's do some things. And so whatever God is saying to us, it's not too late. We got generals in here. Y'all got Amen. 
And so while you got your helmet of salvation, you got your loins girt about, you got your sword, the faith of God, the shield, yeah. the shield, it goes out front. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's overall. It means the Greek phrase of it, the Greek phrase meaning overall, it's translated to out in front of it all. The phrase emphasizes that the shield should be held, should not be held timidly.
Yes. We gotta be equipped. Yes. You yes. gotta know. We gotta be armored. Yes. We gotta be ready to go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God says that if we can only believe, only. if we can only believe, Satan is after that part. Yes. He's after that part. You believe it. Do you believe what he said he can do? Yes. 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 Do you believe that he is your shepherd? Yes. And you shall not want? Yes. Do you believe that he wants you to be prosperous and in good health even as your soul prosperous? Yes. Yes. Do you believe that when the enemy comes up, it is like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against Do you believe that? Yes. Do we believe it? Yes. Do we believe that he never leaves us nor forsakes us? Yes. Do you believe that David said, I once was old, young, but now I'm old, I've never seen the righteous? Blueprint. He put it all out there for us so we can see in 
didn't know how to do it. We got to get into him. Yeah. I know we got many interests. I'm guilty of we all got different kinds of interests. We're, we're interested in our health care. We want to see what the newest health trends are. We want to know what's going on in our in investments. We wanna, we're interested in healthy eating. We're interested in technology. We're interested in music, education, sports, video games, the TikTok, the TV shows, the lifestyle, the rich and famous. Whatever your interests are, it cannot be above the interest in Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 He has to be first. Yeah. He has to be top. So that means when your life, it looks like what you're interested in. It'll tell on you. Your life will tell what you're interested in. If your bank is walking around with TikTok, you see what they're interested in. They phone, and I'm not making no doubt. If, I, if you're scrolling through Instagram with all the workout videos, you see what you're interested in. What time are we giving to God? Do we, do we pick up our Bible as often as we pick up our phones? Guilty. Y'all can stay out with me. Do we pick up our Bibles as much as we turn the TV on to watch our weekly show?
says we have an anchor, we, we which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Amen. I want to talk about it, but I'm going to cut through some of this so we can get y'all on out here. Abide. Abide means to stay or remain. To continually receive, believe, and trust that Jesus is everything we need. What I like about this abide, it says to stay. To continually receive, believe, and trust in Jesus for everything we need. This put me in the frame of mind of my daughter. I mean, I'll tell you. My baby girl, she don't care if we tell her we spent X amount of dollars last week, she gonna remain right here. She gonna say, I want what I want. <laughs> I'm gonna stay right here and I'm gonna remain so that I can continually receive. She got a down pat. She know how to abide in her mom and daddy's pockets. She know how to abide in her grandma's pockets. She stays right there. She don't care how many she in cars, she done told you. She don't care how many backpacks she got from the years before, she still want a new one. <laughs> we, as the children of God, our daddies love us even greater. We, if we being evil, know how to give good gifts to our children. How much more? How much more? Where our heavenly father, if we abide in him. He said abide in him. If you feel like you don't even have the strength to abide, he said, guess what? Just, just come. Because he says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high,
first heard the woman. She said, "Be able to come back. I want you let me know. I want him back." And then when I come back, the wife said, "I want to come and hear his wife too." And, and she's here. She's here. I'm gonna go back here. I want him to say, "Say hello to us. Come on." Come on. It's in the house. It's in the house. What do? 